Hyperprolactinemia is basically defined as the presence of abnormally high levels of prolactin in the blood. Normal prolactin levels are about 13 nanograms per milliliter in women and around 5 nanograms per milliliter in men. With the upper normal limit of serum prolactin levels being around 15 to 25 nanograms per milliliter in both the genders. When fasting serum prolactin levels exceed this upper limit, hyperprolactinemia is indicated. So how is prolactin secretion controlled in the body? Basically, the hypothalamus keeps prolactin levels in check by either secreting dopamine or thyrotropin-releasing hormone. Dopamine is a prolactin inhibiting factor and it inhibits prolactin release from the anterior pituitary, whereas thyrotropin-releasing hormone is a prolactin-releasing hormone and stimulates prolactin release. It is to be noted here that in hypothyroidism, the thyrotropin-releasing hormone levels are elevated, which leads to a subsequent rise in prolactin release from the anterior pituitary. Therefore, it is important to check TSH levels or thyroid-stimulating hormone levels in patients with raised prolactin levels to rule out hypothyroidism. There are multiple reasons for hyperprolactinemia. There are certain natural physiologic states that cause hyperprolactinemia, such as pregnancy and early nursing. Other conditions such as stress, exercise, sleep, cirrhosis, seizures, or even chronic renal failure may lead to hyperprolactinemia. Prolactinomas, which are the most common functioning pituitary adenomas, can also cause hyperprolactinemia. Microadenomas are more common in women since they are detected earlier due to menstrual symptoms and macroadenomas are more common in men and postmenopausal women. Due to their large size, macroadenomas can obstruct the pituitary stalk, which can lead to an increase in prolactin release by blocking dopamine transport from the hypothalamus, which is also known as the stalk effect. Drugs that block dopamine synthesis, such as phenothiazines and metoclopramide, can also lead to raised prolactin levels. Dopamine depleting agents such as alpha methyl dopa and reserpine, as well as other drugs such as narcotics, cocaine, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, and risperidone, can also cause hyperprolactinemia. As mentioned earlier, there are certain conditions that overcome normal dopamine inhibition, such as primary hypothyroidism, which lead to raised thyrotropin releasing hormone levels and increased prolactin release. The symptoms of hyperprolactinemia in women include galactoria, menstrual abnormalities such as oligomenorrhea or amenorrhea. The amenorrhea is caused by inhibition of hypothalamic release of gonadotrophin-releasing hormone, which leads to a decrease in luteinizing hormone and follicle-stimulating hormone secretion. Infertility is common in such women since prolactin inhibits the LH surge that causes ovulation. Osteoporosis and osteopenia may occur in long-standing cases. In men, hyperprolactinemia presents as hypogonadism, erectile dysfunction, gynecomastia, which is an abnormal enlargement of breasts in men, and infertility. Before starting the clinical workup of hyperprolactinemia, always rule out states such as pregnancy, lactation, hypothyroidism, and medications. Prolactin levels greater than 100 nanogram per milliliter suggest probable pituitary adenomas. Prolactin levels are usually directly proportionate to the size of the tumor, ranging from 100 nanograms per milliliter with approximately 1 cm tumor size to 200 nanogram per milliliter with approximately 2 cm tumor size. If prolactin levels do not match with the tumor size, it can either be due to poorly differentiated prolactinoma or the presence of large cystic component in the tumor. Basal fasting serum prolactin levels greater than 100 to 200 nanograms per milliliter in a non-pregnant woman indicates a need for a pituitary MRI. So how do we manage a case of hyperprolactinemia? Well, it's initially treated with dopamine agonists such as cabergoline or bromocriptine, which reduce prolactin levels. Cabergoline is usually preferred over bromocriptine due to a better side effect profile. Surgery is usually reserved for cases 
which do not respond to dopamine agonists, or for those cases with significant compressive neurological effects. Surgery proves to be more effective for microadenomas than macroadenomas. Lastly, radiation therapy can be used if drug therapy and surgery prove to be ineffective.